fall. We then divide this volume by each character's cooling rate to get their time. Elsa crushes Frozone in this challenge, finishing in two days to his 94 and giving her point number two. Now Damn. they need to build a giant ice sculpture of themselves. Two days compared to 94? That's kind of crazy. New videos every single day. Hit the bell, hit the sub. Let's go. powerful, cold powered character in TV and film. We'll treat their movies Mr. like a new evidence. Make real physicists study them to get hard numbers on their exact Ooh, amounts of chill. I like the and breakdown. Our heroes compete in challenges of our own design to crown one. Iceman's in here too. This is power levels. When deciding on competitors, three came to mind. Break it down. From Frozen, Frozone from The Incredibles, and Iceman from the X-Men movies. But while Iceman is an Omega-level mutant in the comics, we need footage. In Future Past, he lasts just one scene, and in the original <laughs> trilogy, he's an Omega-level turd. So Elsa versus Frozone it is. For our challenges, right, they'll go. have to ice slide down the Hudson River, freeze the Statue of Liberty until it breaks, then build an ice sculpture monument to their greatness. Whoever finishes each challenge first gets a point. Most points at the end of all three is crowned the most powerful. Let's go. Let's go. When we begin, they both take off down the Hudson at their top speed. Let's analyze a clip of Frozone to figure out what that would be. During this scene, he passes several cars whose length we can estimate. By dividing the distance traveled by the time, we can get his velocity just under 86 miles per hour. Elsa okay. uses ice to move the fastest in the scene where she pushes Olaf and her I don't know how y'all got that number, we'll but I'll, I'll go with it. <laughs> the diameter of the circle they make and computing what the circumference would be. Then, after timing how long it takes her to travel that distance, we'll divide the distance by the time to get her velocity. But she's pushing three people here, and we want Elsa's solo speed. So we'll need to subtract the average weight of a five-year-old girl and an object with the density of snow the same. I know this is getting very specific, but if, if they are trying to be as specific as possible, they're going right into like the, the sports science of this uh, from the breakdown. But I don't think it's not very fair to, to gauge Elsa's child speed when she's an adult because you would assume that she's probably honed her abilities and has gotten better with her abilities as she's gotten older and her speed's probably faster as an adult while Frozone he's an experienced you know superhero so by the time he was an adult you know he pretty much mastered his craft um you would think so with Elsa but that's just nitpicking we're gonna keep watching let's Same go size of Olaf from the total weight of all three the ratio of Elsa's mass to the whole group lets us figure out how much faster she'd go if she was only pushing herself. Okay, so now they're showing, they're showing more stuff. Since the Hudson so I spoke is a little too soon. Long, All right. We can now easily figure out their total time for part one. Frozone jumps out to an early lead in the first part of the challenge, racing down the Hudson in nine minutes to Elsa's 22 and giving him the first point. No, wait, they now still, no, they still, they still gauge her kid speed. They'll have to destroy it by using their freezing powers to suck out all the heat from the metal support structure and make it collapse. Generally, metals become brittle below negative 50 degrees Celsius, and at extremely cold temperatures, it becomes weak enough to break. In this scene where Elsa freezes her iron handguards off, we can see how long it takes her to freeze metal to the point of failure. First, we'll estimate the volume of the handguards, measure the time it takes to become breakable, then determine the volume per unit time for which she can turn metal brittle enough to break. And we'll do the same with Frozone in the scene where he destroys Reflux's goggles. Estimate the volume of the goggles, measure the time it takes for Frozone to do his thing, then they determine the deep volume in this. per unit time it takes him to make metal brittle enough to break. Since we now know their cooling rates, we can look at the volume of the skeletal frame of the statue and estimate that if 10% of the bottom supports turn brittle and crumble away, the center of mass will tilt over its base and fall. We then divide this volume by each character's cooling rate to get their time. Elsa crushes Frozone in this challenge, finishing in two days to his 94 and giving her point number two. Now Damn. they need to build a giant ice sculpture of themselves. Two days the compared to 94? That's kind of crazy. see how fast they are at ice creation? We'll time the scene where Elsa builds an ice castle from scratch and estimate its volume. And for Frozone, we'll use the scene where he stops the hydro liner by creating a giant snowdrift. We'll take the volume of a similar real-world yacht, since he makes an equivalent amount of snow, then convert it to ice by adjusting for the difference in density between the two. Side note, when you freeze that much water that quickly, it would remove about 10 tons of TNT worth of energy. So Frozone is either containing that within his body, or it's best not to think too hard about it. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty has a volume it's of about just a cartoon, guys. cubic meters, so dividing this number by their ice creation rates gets us nice. the time it would take to make a statue of their own greatness. Frozone is more than twice as fast in this challenge, but unlike Elsa, there's no proof he has any artistic ability, so his statue might look kind of janky. 
Still, Speed wins, and his victory in Challenge 3 makes Frozone our super chill overall winner. How about a frosty beverage as a consolation prize? The eh? Frozone. Just for one. Don't tell me about my super suit, woman. Let's check how long it would take her to cool down a lukewarm, non-alcoholic beer. We determined her cooling power is about 45 times faster than Frozone's, and since he can transform about 43,600 gallons of water into ice in one second, Elsa could cool off a beer in 48 nanoseconds. Meaning, the crystallization process from water to ice was almost 50 times faster than Frozone. I don't know or about that. Scientists would say, like, so fast. Who knew Elsa was such a beast? I didn't, but she still lost, and the data doesn't care about your feelings. So let us know who you want to see compete, and you can see them face off right here in the next episode That's cool, of man. Power Levels. Oh, that's sweet. I, I love the. I love this idea as a show. I think it's very cool to use the science from, you know, their movies to compare and uh, compete against each other. Even though it's a little tricky because, you know, cartoons or comics or whatever the case is, it uh, sometimes makes it a little bit trickier. Especially cartoons. I would say comic books are more trying to go towards that consistency of a uh, of, of realism with certain things i mean if you guys understand what i mean like for instance like cartoons like sometimes they'll just for instance like when when elsa the whole thing about elsa being 50 times faster when elsa freezes those things and breaks it the the animator designers they're they're probably not even thinking about oh let's think about elsa's power and how strong she is they're just like let's get to the point we the 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 person watching the film knows that she can freeze shit so let's just show her you know freezing shit and, and breaking through um so where comic books are more like um hey this character's done this in the past this is their level we're just gonna you know we're gonna kind of cadence it towards you know what we've already made a foundation of so it was definitely interesting though i loved the whole science behind it uh it was an amazing versus take i thought it was really cool really well done by screen junkies as well just the breakdown and the animation and everything so let me know down and below who do you think would win between frozone and elza not in in a, a a little nice competition i'm talking about a death battle if they fought to the death who do you think would win let me know in the comments below and hey new videos every single day check back at the channel we got new reviews we got new reactions all kinds of stuff on movies tv film all that so check that out and subscribe too. We're trying to get to that first milestone of 1K subscribers. So I'll see you in the next video and be easy.